Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Six Nations 2024, When is it and how to watch in UK? Luis Rubiales accused of inappropriately touching England players by head of FA. The IHRA definition of anti-Semitism has no place on Australian campuses. Tributes paid across sport to Russell Hargreaves after death aged 45. I'm a celebs Nella Rose speaks out for first time after exit. Six Nations 2024, when is it and how to watch in UK? Yahoo! England captain Owen Farrell will sit out the 2024 Six Nations in order to prioritize his and his family's mental well-being, and joins teammates Courtney Laws, Johnny May and Ben Youngs, who have all retired from international rugby. Ireland will also be without captain Johnny Sexton and winger Keith Earls, who both retired after the 2023 World Cup. The 2024 Six Nations starts on February 2 with France hosting Ireland. Luis Rubiales accused of inappropriately touching England players by head of FA. Yahoo! Luis Rubiales, the disgraced former president of Spain's Football Association, RFEF, has been banned from football for three years for the inappropriate touching of female England players during the medal ceremony after the 2023 Women's World Cup final. In her testimony to the FIFA Disciplinary Committee, Debbie Hewitt, chair of the English FA, said Rubiales had cupped and stroked the face of England midfielder Laura Coombs and had seemingly forcefully kissed England defender Lucy Bronze. The IHRA definition of anti-Semitism has no place on Australian campuses. Al Jazeera. The adoption of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, IHRA, definition of anti-Semitism by universities in Australia is stifling academic freedom and silencing criticism of Israel's actions, according to an op-ed in Al Jazeera. The definition has been used to discourage activism in solidarity with Palestine and to hinder discussions of Israel's human rights violations and war crimes. The University of Melbourne, for example, has adopted the definition and refused to condemn Israel's actions in Gaza, despite legal experts calling it a textbook case of genocide. The adoption of the definition undermines the fight against racism and treats anti-Semitism as if it occurs in isolation from other forms of racism, argue Palestinian and Jewish academics. The definition is being used to silence criticism of Zionism and the Israeli government, with accusations of anti-Semitism being leveled against Palestinian and Muslim students and staff. The article calls for the rescinding of the IHRA definition and the defense of academic freedom on Australian campuses. Tributes paid across sport to Russell Hargreaves after death aged 45. The Independent. Russell Hargreaves, the journalist and broadcaster, has died aged 45. Hargreaves was known for his rugby union commentary on TalkSport Radio. He also covered a range of other sports during his media career, including football and golf. Hargreaves leaves behind his wife Rachel and three children. Tributes have been paid to Hargreaves across the sports media. I'm a celebs Nella Rose speaks out for first time after exit. The Independent. Former I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Contestant Nella Rose has spoken out for the first time after exiting the Australian jungle earlier this week. Not even Trump can derail progress on climate, says John Kerry. The Sydney Morning Herald. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry has stated at the COP28 summit in Dubai that not even a second term for former President Donald Trump would affect the momentum towards a low-carbon, no-carbon global economy. Kerry emphasized the need to phase out fossil fuels in order to achieve the target of net-zero emissions by 2050. He also praised China for transitioning rapidly to cleaner energy, but noted differences over coal. Kerry expressed confidence that the global economy will become low-carbon, but cautioned that the question was whether this would happen in time to avert the worst consequences of the climate crisis. Mullet fest, where the derided do isn't a hairstyle, it's a lifestyle. Washington Post. Mullet fest, where Australians can showcase their love of mullet hairstyles, took place last weekend. The event included a range of categories such as extreme, grubby, everyday and ranga, a derogatory term for a redhead. The mullet hairstyle, which was popular in the 1980s, has made a comeback in Australia during the COVID-19 pandemic, when many people were restricted from visiting hair salons. The hairstyle has become a lifestyle for many Australians and is seen as a symbol of being easygoing and unpretentious. It's got this macho feeling to it, said Ailsa Weaver, a fashion expert at the University of Technology Sydney. This stridently, unapologetically Australian, cut the apron ties to Britain attitude. Where is hot in January? The best destinations for winter sun. The Independent. January is a great time to escape the winter blues in the UK and head off in search of some winter sun. This article highlights some of the best destinations to visit in January for warm weather. Buenos Aires in Argentina is recommended, with January being the middle of summer there. 
The city is culturally vibrant, with plenty of activity during the day and a frenzied nightlife. Barbados is another excellent destination, with its bone-white sands and turquoise waters. The island offers luxury resorts and plenty of water sports activities. Tenerife is the warmest destination in Europe and offers a fly-and-flop holiday on its southern coast. Zanzibar in Tanzania is a beautiful archipelago with paradise-like beaches and excellent snorkeling opportunities. Dubai in the UAE is a glitzy desert metropolis with plenty of modern sites and extensive heritage districts. Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam offers a lively and often hectic way of life, with a fusion of past and present. Finally, Melbourne in Australia offers a combination of excellent weather and a mix of different characteristics, including sports venues, restaurants, nightlife, and art galleries. Where is hot in February? The Independent. February is often a miserable month in the UK, with freezing fog and grey skies. However, it is also a great time to escape to warmer destinations for some winter sun. Some of the best destinations for winter sun in February include Gran Canaria, Goa, St. Lucia, Auckland, Orlando, Phuket, and the Algarve. These destinations offer a range of activities from hiking to beach lounging to city exploring, providing something for everyone. Ten bagger stocks are the holy grail, strategist. Yahoo! Investors are looking for high-growth 10-bagger stocks, which are stocks whose share price is capable of multiplying by a factor of 10x. These stocks have very strong revenue growth, are mid-cap in size with room to expand, have existing profitability, and attractive valuations. While tech dominates as the top US 10-bagger sector, other sectors like mining and lithium are driving 10-bagger stocks in countries like Australia and Sweden. As COP28 talks try to curb warming, study says Earth at risk of hitting irreversible tipping points. Associated Press. A team of 200 scientists has warned that the world is at risk of reaching the point of no return for five of Earth's natural systems due to human-induced climate change. The study focuses on tipping points, when the impact of rising global temperatures becomes irreversible. The scientists identify five such points, the melting of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, the death of warm water coral reefs, the thawing of permafrost and impacts on a North Atlantic Ocean current. The report states that these tipping points pose a threat that has never been faced before by humanity. Myanmar Central Bank Stops Setting Foreign Exchange Rates Nikkei Asia Myanmar Central Bank will no longer set exchange rates for foreign currencies and will allow banks and dealers to decide rates themselves. The move comes as Myanmar's economy struggles after a military takeover earlier this year. Authorities have implemented measures to suppress demand for foreign currencies and have cracked down on black market trading. The central bank's decision is seen as a sign that the junta is in trouble and unable to supply the foreign currency needed by its own suppliers. Myanmar's economy and currency were showing signs of stabilization earlier this year, but investment remained weak and businesses were struggling to access foreign currency needed for imports. Hello, my name is Dr. Six, and I am your resident observer from the Six Degrees World. I'm here to bring you the latest news and provide you with a humorous and lighthearted analysis of the stories that have been making headlines. So, let's dive in. In rugby news, England captain Owen Farrell has announced that he will be sitting out the 2024 Six Nations to prioritize his mental well-being. This decision follows retirements from international rugby by his teammates Courtney Laws, Johnny May, and Ben Youngs. It seems like the pressure and demands of the sport are taking a toll on these players. Maybe they should consider taking up a less intense sport, like synchronized swimming or competitive knitting. Moving on to football, Luis Rubiales, the former president of Spain's Football Association, has been banned for three years for inappropriately touching female England players during the 2023 Women's World Cup medal ceremony. It's a shame that someone in such a high position would act so unprofessionally. Let's hope this serves as a reminder to all sports officials that they should keep their hands to themselves. In Australia, there's been a heated debate over the adoption of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism by universities. Critics argue that this definition stifles academic freedom and prevents discussions of Israel's actions. It's a tricky situation, as everyone should have the right to express their opinions, but it's important to remember that freedom of speech should not be used as an excuse for hate speech or discrimination. On a somber note, journalist and broadcaster Russell Hargreaves has passed away at the age of 45. Hargreaves was known for his rugby union commentary and his coverage of various other sports. His contributions to the sports media will be sorely missed, and our thoughts go out to his family and loved ones during this difficult time. In other news, former I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here. Contestant Nella Rose has spoken out for the first time since leaving the show. 
I'm not sure about you, but I'm on the edge of my seat waiting to hear what she has to say. Oh, the suspense. Now, let's talk climate change. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry has stated that not even former President Donald Trump can derail progress on climate action. Kerry emphasized the need to phase out fossil fuels and praised China for its efforts in transitioning to cleaner energy. It's good to see that despite political differences, there is still a collective effort to tackle the climate crisis. After all, we're all in this together, whether we like it or not. On a lighter note, Australians have come together to celebrate Mullet Fest, a festival where they can showcase their love for mullet hairstyles. The mullet, a hairstyle popular in the 1980s, has made a comeback during the pandemic when people couldn't visit hair salons. It's become a symbol of being easygoing and unpretentious. So, if you're looking for a hairstyle that says, I'm laid back and ready to party, the mullet might be for you. Lastly, if you're tired of the cold and gloomy weather in the UK, January is a great time to escape to warmer destinations. Buenos Aires, Barbados, Tenerife, Zanzibar, Dubai, Ho Chi Minh City, and Melbourne are all recommended for some much-needed winter sun. And if you can't make it in January, don't worry, there are still plenty of options for February. So, pack your bags, grab your sunscreen, and get ready to soak up some rays. That's all for today's news. I hope you've enjoyed my witty take on the stories of the day. Now, it's time to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these topics? Do you have any burning questions? Don't be shy, let's start a discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.